Hey everybody, this is an old guy gaming here coming at you with ARK Survival Evolved. So I first heard about this game uh, when I was actually playing Seven Days to Die Alpha 12 and was pretty uh, in, into that game at the time. So I figured, well, I'll put this game on hold and try it out later on. And so now here I am. I've spent already about a week or so playing the game just learning the ropes and uh, by the way I'm also playing on single player and already have recorded several scenes that I'll include in the first few videos that I'll post in uh, what I'm going to refer to as my preseason. So the idea behind the preseason is to show you various clips of my progress as I learn the game and go along. However the clips are going to be somewhat random and won't have the continuity that you would see from a normal playthrough uh, just for my first time through. If everything goes according to plan, then what I'll do is uh, probably also start a main season where I will do a normal uh, or a more traditional Let's Play with some walkthroughs and the videos will be much more, uh, th there'll be a lot more continuity in the videos. One of the reasons why I want to do this is that um, most of the videos that are currently on YouTube for ARC are more multiplayer focused and I wanted to do a video series that's completely single player without any tribes or any of the you know any PvP or any multi, uh, multiplayer types of elements. One of the reasons for that you know PvP aside by the way I am only talking in the context of PvE um, is that playing this game solo is actually pretty hard even on the you know the default settings. When you're playing on multiplayer and you have a tribe you know, you have a lot of benefits from that tribe. You have higher level players that can craft you items that you can't craft yourself. You have shared XP, uh, access to, you know, blueprints, people to help you, you know, bring down that large dino that you want to tame, and various things like that. Obviously, you don't have any of that on solo players, so you're all on your own. And so the game is quite a bit more challenging. So, um, yeah, the preseason is going to be just me learning the game, and showing you various scenes at different times in the game, uh, milestones and things like that. Uh, but again, it'll be it'll be somewhat random. And if all goes well, then we'll go ahead and then record a main season and do uh, a normal Let's Play. So my modus operandi when I start a new game is I usually just jump right in and start playing. But I will also you know watch videos and read up on the wiki and things like that. I'll try, I'll try to discover how to do things in the game, but if I get to a point where I need to do something and I can't, I just can't figure it out, then I'm going to go ahead and read it up on the wiki just because I don't want to spend a lot of time being frustrated, you know, trying to figure out how to do something. I'd rather just, you know, play the game and enjoy it. One example of that is when I first, you know, train uh, my, uh, my first Parasaur, which is not Pete here. Um, unfortunately, my first Parasaur was devoured by a um, Sarko, and I actually have the video footage of that, which I'll show you know, probably actually in my first clip. But anyhow, when I first trained that first Parasaur, I couldn't figure out how to get it to eat the Narco Berries. I put it in its inventory, but it wouldn't eat it. And then I discovered, okay, well, uh, after reading on the wiki, that I had to force feed using the remote use item. So that's just one example. You know, I didn't want to spend a lot of time trying to figure that out. I figured, oh, well, let's just go read it so we can, you know, get on with the show, so to speak. I kind of like a balance between, you know, hardcore. I like games to be challenging, but I don't like them to be so hard, you know, that they're, they aren't enjoyable and, and that they become frustrating. So I'm, I'm usually a normal difficulty, uh, you know, type of game player. Sometimes I'll, I'll bump the difficulty up a little bit on some games, you know, once I get really good at it, but never been a, a fan of the really hardcore stuff. But neither, neither do I like the really simple stuff either. So just, you know, just kind of a middle-of-the-road uh, type of player when it comes to game difficulty. So... What you see uh, in the background here are all the dinos that I have trained so far. So let's go ahead and do an introduction. So, okay, we'll start with Pete here. So Pete was my second Parasaur that I trained, and I currently use him as my main mode of transportation. He's pretty fast on land. He's got a lot of stamina, and until you can get, like, into a raptor, which, by the way, is the next dino I'm planning on training, uh, he's really pretty good for, for uh, you know, transportation. He's not really good for much of anything else, though. He can't fight to speak of. I mean, he can, but he's not that tough. 
you can use them to harvest, but it's debatable whether or not uh, harvesting on Parasaur is any better than just, you know, harvesting by hand. Uh, so, yeah, this is Pete. Say hi, Pete. Hey. Over here, I've got my two turtles. Uh, Jose Cuervo uh, was my first turtle that I trained, and he's now level 13. And then right after I trained Jose, I also got Jose a mate, uh, Margarita. Uh, one of the things that you'll notice if you look at the dinos, they have a heart above their name, and that's called mate boosting. So if you can get uh, a male and a female of the same species, train them both up, then they'll give each other a boost. And the boost is actually 33% more damage and um, you know toughness and resistance. So that's a, a very significant boost. So these guys, their main role is uh, is to tank, and I can make a saddle and ride them, but there's not a lot of point in doing that because the turtles, as you can imagine, are fairly slow, but they're really, really tough and have a lot of health, and they do a pretty decent damage too, so they make really excellent tanks, and that's generally what their role is. Uh, they also have fairly good, you know, weight or storage, so I'll, I have, you know, I'll have them carry stuff around too if I, if I need them to. Next, we have Stella here. Uh, Stella, oh, Stella is actually ready uh, for some training, so let's go into her inventory. And I'm, let's see, I think I'm going to increase her health. Well, I'm not really going to use her in combat, though. She already has 1,000 health. I think what I'm going to do is uh, increase her speed, because I'm going to use her for harvesting. That's what Stegos are, are, are really, really good at. Unfortunately, though, I have to... Uh, uh, reach level 30 before I can put a saddle on her. So I'm at t 25 or 26 right now. What am I at? Uh, wrong button. Yeah, I'm 25. So I have five more levels before I'll actually be able to use her. So I'm just keeping her at camp, you know, pumping her health and all that. And then uh, when the time comes, uh, she'll be a really great dino to harvest berries and, and the other things like that that you need. This guy over here, I really lucked out getting him. This is a, a, a Carnosaur or a Carno. And um, I really shouldn't have him at, at the, my current level. He's a higher level dinosaur, but I, I lucked out and found him stuck in the trees. And, you know, I suppose some of you might think that's kind of cheap, but I was not going to pass up the opportunity uh, to train one of these guys and have him watching my back. As you can imagine, he can do some major damage. He's one of the fastest dinosaurs in the entire game. And, you know, with him by my side, I can, you know, really rock and roll and go into other places that I'd be a little more leery about. So his name's Crazy, and he also is ready for some training, so let's go into his menu. One of the dinosaurs just pooed. That's always lovely, especially on camera. And for him, um, I'm just basically going to uh, pump his damage. I mean, he's, he already does crazy damage, so he's going to do even more crazy damage. Over here, I have my two trikes, or triceratops. Uh, I trained Tonka first. He's level 18. And he's currently, uh, th these dinosaurs at my level are just awesome. They're, they're all purpose. You can use them to tank, you can use them to do damage. And where they're really great is for harvesting. So once you hit level 20 and can make a, a saddle and a train of triceratops, it just really changes the game. It's a milestone in the game because then you can get a whole lot more berries a lot faster than you can when you're doing it by hand or you know if you're doing it on a parasaur like with Pete there. Uh, Tanka is a little lower, but also uh, very capable. And again, I have two Triceratops so that I can have them both mate boosted. So 33% increase, really, really cool. Um, and I can ride either one of them as I need to. The only downside really to the trikes is that they're pretty slow. Um, so, and they don't have a whole lot of stamina either. So uh, other than that though, they're really just excellent all-purpose dinosaurs and very, very capable. Oh, I had a little game freeze. That happens every once in a while. A little bit irritating, but, you know, what can you do, right? Uh, these are my Dillos, and uh, Dilophosaurus, I think, is their, their full name. Um, this is Diana. She's actually pretty high level. She's 37, so she would be uh, like the alpha female, I guess. Um, and she also is ready for some more health. I'm just pumping health on these guys because... Oh, hold on. I'm looking at the wrong person. Or wrong person, sorry. <laughs> wrong Diana. Pete, get out of the way. Yeah, so I'm just pumping their health. Um, one Dillo by themselves is not really all that much, but if you get a pack of them going, they, they're actually very capable um, dinos, and they have the ability you know, to blind and stun too with their, their spit thing. Uh, so I'm planning on you know, grabbing at least one more, probably two males and two females, 
um, and maybe even get more than two. So, yeah, this is um, Doobie, and he's pretty high level too. Uh, and then I also have Delbert. He's a little bit uh, younger than the other two. All right, so those are my dinos. Um, next thing we'll do is I'm going to show you where my base currently is. Now, right now, I am... Hold on, let me change my camera here. So right now I'm on uh, in the southern region of the island in a place called uh, Footpaw Island. So if you go into the map here, um, yeah, the light's kind of weird. So you can see that I'm in the in the south uh, west corner of, of the map, and where it says me, uh, that whole island there, it kind of I don't have the whole thing revealed, but it, it kind of looks like a football. So that, so this is called Footpaw Island. Uh, this is actually a pretty safe place, um, and I moved down here because when I first started playing the game, I started and spawned in the north, and I had no idea that the north is the worst place you can start the game out. It's very dangerous up there. I kept, you know, dying left and right, getting eaten by just about anything, you know, that you can imagine. Raptors, saber-toothed tigers, uh, T-Rex was chasing me at one point. It was just really rough, and so I finally figured out, hey, I shouldn't be in the north, so I moved down to the south. And I found this little uh, promontory here uh, and little land bridge, kind of a cool place, and I decided to set up camp over here, thinking that it would be a pretty safe location. And, of course, it, it is a very safe location. I uh, haven't seen any dangerous dinos here in the entire time I've been playing. Uh, so this is my, my camp here. I got a little hut and just recently built a forge and a, and a smithy. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, I have some uh, fireplaces and things like that. The one downside to being out here, though, is that it's, like, way out here. So I don't have a lot of resources available. I can't get to water immediately. There's not a lot of vegetation. There are rocks around, but so it does make it a little bit of a hassle to get resources. And because of that, and because I'm you know starting to advance and have a pretty capable team of dinos now, I'm going to start moving on to the mainland uh, to better better hunting grounds. Going to be a little more dangerous, but also you know we're I think we're ready for it. Of course, we're still not ready to be taking on uh, T Rexes yet. But actually, you know, we, if we had to, we probably could. Yeah, so this is the gang. And as I mentioned before, my plan is to start a preseason with more random videos of just me learning the game and leveling up and reaching milestones and having fun. And then if all goes well, uh, we'll start a main season and do a more traditional let's play with more continuity between the videos. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, please leave a like. And this is Old Guy Gaming signing out. All right, guys. Let's go hunting. <laughs>